Welcome to the Faith Lift Radio Podcast, where doubt is destroyed and your faith is lifted. Here's today's message from Dr. Glenn. Okie dokie. So we are now in part three in our series, uh, uh, Why Am I Not Receiving My Healing? And we have used uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 as our stepping stone. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and uh, verse, um, let's read from verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, please. And while you're turning there, let's bow our head and let's have a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you as we go to your word that we are blessed. Spirit of God, I'm asking today that you will think through my mind and that you will speak through my lips. Thank you for these, your wonderful people. They've got ears to hear, mind to understand, and heart to receive the word of the living God. Everybody say amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we have used this as our stepping stone. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And so I'm going to pick up today from verse um, from verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So examine yourself today. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. We dealt with that yesterday. For this cause, many are weak, sickly, and many sleep. Premature death. Three categories when you do not rightly discern the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? We've discovered that the term the body of the Lord has double reference. Number one, it literally, physically means the body of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And so his body was prepared a special body, right? And that body paid the price for your sin and your sicknesses. So a lot of people are ignorant of that fact. And remember this, Paul says, lest the enemy, Satan, should have an advantage over you, for we are not to be ignorant of his devices. Your ignorance is the strength of your enemy. Satan can only have an advantage over you when you are walking in a lack of knowledge. All right? When you are walking in ignorance. Now, secondly, the body of Christ, the body of the Lord, represents the body of Christ. So we cannot go against one another. All right, and, and, and fight and, and destroy one another. The Bible tells you if you bite and devour one another, be careful lest you be devoured. Okay? So we cannot afford to be uh, going against our brothers and against our sisters. Now, yesterday I gave you seven, and let's quickly write them down. All right, I gave you seven um, reasons why people do not receive their healing. And there are more than that, but I'm just going to give you this seven. All right. So write this down. Number one, we talk about a lack of knowledge or ignorance. Number two, we talk about not discerning the body of the Lord. Number three, we talked about unbelief. Number four, we talk about unforgiveness, bitterness, which the Bible tells you that when you're offended, you allow that root uh, to spring up, uh, this root of offense spring up to defile you. Number five, we were talking about this yesterday, and I want to deal with that today. Uh, problems in the bloodline, bloodline issues, bloodline issues. Number six, we talked about that people are not hearing the word. There is a connection between hearing and healing. Your healing is preceded by your hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the living God. Then number seven, we talked about um, witchcraft sicknesses, witchcraft sicknesses, and you'll find this reality in Psalms 59. And then we talk about number eight, the uh, abusing of our bodies, the abusing of our bodies, a lack of exercise, not the right, not in the right thing. You know, like I told you yesterday, um, from, from Sunday, from Sunday, Till today, today's what? Wednesday, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13, 13, 13, 14. I've, since Sunday, I've preached uh, 14 times. I have ministered 14 times, all right? And last night, I was preparing some messages and, and studying, and I about, went to bed about uh, 1.30 in the morning, uh, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning to get up at, f uh, let's see, what time did I get up this morning? I got up uh, just before 7 o'clock, okay? So I went to bed about 2, 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, um, I was listening to the Bible. I was listening to the book of Ruth, the book of Ruth, and then to the book of um, Esther, I believe I was listening to. And then I fell asleep, all right? But about shortly before 2 a.m., I was peckish because I, had, I ate about 6 o'clock, and I didn't eat. I wasn't hungry after that because I was busy preaching and studying. So about 1 o'clock, I was... Uh, I was uh, peckish, so I had some chips, some crisp, and I thought to myself at one o'clock in the morning, that that is not healthy. So you can't be abusing your body and expect to be living in divine health. All right. So you have, you were created to move. You have to exercise and you have to eat right. Yes, and the older you become, the more exercise you need to do. Let me say it again. The older you become, the more exercise you need to do. All right. So today, I want to look at something that I want you to, to write this down. Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we want to look at this bloodline issue. Now, what does that mean? I want you please to write this down, please. <clears throat> I want you to write this down. Bloodline issues are very stubborn. Bloodline issues will be a battle that will be on your hands. Now, being redeemed prepares you and qualifies you for heaven. But in the meantime, you are living on earth in an unredeemed body that has roots in family bloodlines and family patterns. If you do not understand this fact, then you will not understand the enormity and the seriousness of the battle that is ahead of you. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand that there are bloodline issues. Satan will not fight your spirit man because he knows once you're born again, your spirit belongs to God. And then once you die, you're going to heaven. But just like Moses fought, uh, Satan fought over the body of Moses, Satan is fighting your body. Now, when you became a born again believer, if any man being Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. That's talking about your spirit man. Your spirit man is a recreated being. But the Bible tells you very clearly, look in your Bible, please, Romans. Let's go to the book of Romans, please. And I want you to follow along with me. Here. Romans in chapter 8. In fact, you should memorize the, the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. Okay? Now, let's read verse... <clears throat> Let's read verse 20. <laughs> my, my Bible is so, is so mocked up. I can hardly see anything that you uh, on, in this Bible. Romans in chapter 8, please. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. We are waiting for the redemption of our body, which means right now that you, as a born-again believer, you have a redeemed spirit. You are a redeemed spirit living in, un, living in an unredeemed body. That is so important that I need you to understand this. As a born-again believer, your spirit has been reborn, redeemed. But the Bible says that we are waiting for the redemption of our body. Now look at the next verse. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is saved, that is saved is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? Okay, so what, now which one is it? Am I saved by faith through grace, which it says in Ephesians chapter 2, or am I saved by hope, 
Well, both. My spirit man has been saved by grace through faith. But my body will be saved in the hope, in hope, in the future. See, hope is future. Faith is now in past tense. You hear me now? Faith lives in the past tense of God's word. Amen. And faith takes it now. So my spirit is born again, recreated, reborn now. But my body is yet to be redeemed. So a redeemed spirit living in an unredeemed body, you're supposed to overpower your unredeemed body from your redeemed spirit. But the problem will be that your flesh will fight against your spirit. And Satan is very cunning. Now I want you to write this down, and I'm going to give you something else today that I want you to think about. All right? Satan is very cunning. You know, we live in America, and you'll notice something um, in America. Everybody wants to know their lineage. You know where, where they come, where, where they come from. I mean, what is that? Uh, what is that um, website that people keep going to to find out about their forefathers? Uh, what is it called now? Miss Bonnie, can you help me with that? Or Barry, or Bill, can you help me with that? What is that? Uh, they advertise it on TV all the time. You can find out about uh, your ancestors. Um, and Americans love that. We l l people just love to trace their roots. When people ask me, what's your roots? Where do you come from? You know what my roots is? Sinner. <laughs> That's my roots. But then Jesus saved me. All right, Ancestry.com. That's correct. Ancestry.com. Now, so people l just love to find out about their roots, where they came from. And they, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Your roots, your bloodline, has some issues. Your bloodline has some issues. And if you don't deal with it, they will deal with you. And so, now, I want you please to write a few things down. I said to you yesterday, and I've been harping on about this for weeks and months, and I want you to listen to this now. Issues of the bloodline are as a result of iniquity, witchcraft, idolatry, or the three-pronged plug. There's more. There's more, but I'm going to use this three for me in the meantime. Iniquity, witchcraft, and um, <clears throat> by witchcraft, I mean you da people dabble into witchcraft, into Ouija board, they're making covenants. These are evil covenants. By witchcraft, we're talking about evil covenants. And then idolatry. These are, these are things that will bring issues in the bloodline. These are doors opening to the bloodline. And then write the words, uh, evil happenings. Evil happening. That's the fourth one, but we will deal with that some of the time. But what I want you to understand this, Bill says, my roots are English and Scottish. Couldn't be. Couldn't be. Couldn't be, Bill, because English people don't talk much. Trust me. I was raised in England. You, I don't know where you, I don't know what, maybe some disturbed Englishman. <laughs> Some mental, some mental English guy. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm just joking with you, Bill. <laughs> I call Bill McGill Mr. Loquacious. Anyway, stop bugging me, Bill. All right. I want you to write this down and never forget this. In fact, write this down in capital letters. Iniquity gives the devil equity in your life. Iniquity gives the devil equity. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> equity in a bloodline. Did you did you get that? Iniquity gives equity to demons, 
to the devil in the bloodline. That is so, so important that I need you to write this down. Now, bloodline issues, I want you to write this down, please. Bloodline issues, <clears throat> write this down, is a pattern, a pre-existing blueprint that plays out in the lives of predetermining future victims. This is why Satan will do this. Wherever you find a bloodline issue, you will find a strong man. And wherever you find a strong man, you will find a stronghold, which means these are things which are difficult to deal with. All right, things which are difficult to deal with. And the moment you start dealing with them, they will rear against, they will, they will come back fighting against you because it is a strong man. Are you listening? So a bloodline is a pattern of or a pre-existent blueprint that plays out in the lives of future victims because it's in the bloodline. It's in the bloodstream. A pattern, a recurring pattern, is a specific blueprint drawn and passed on through the bloodstream, the bloodline. And that, that blueprint can be spiritual blueprint, mental blueprint, blueprint, and physical blueprint. All right, you need to write these things down. Thank you, Jesus. Now, <clears throat> let's write a few things down, okay? More. If you've got it more, I want you to write it down. I want to deal with this because I find too many Christians are suffering. They're believing God for healing and they just think it's a sickness, but it's more than a sickness. Any sickness that has a spirit attached to it is trouble. Any spirit that has a spirit attached to it is trouble because there's some sickness that comes because we live in the fallen world, all right? And um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, there's a word that I'm looking for. Oh, Jesus. The law of uh, when things goes bad to worse, anything left to itself doesn't get better but gets worse. What's, what's that law again? I keep... Uh, my mind's gone blank for a second here. Thank you, Jesus. Da, 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 da. Uh, do you remember, Miss Bonnie? I've said it many times. Um, what is that word now? Thank you. You see what happens when you only have like three, four, five hours sleep a day? Or, or, thank you. See, I knew you'd help me. The law of entropy. Thank you. There are some sickness that occurs because you live in a fallen sinful world and the law of entropy is working against you but you can deal with the law of entropy because there's no demons attached to it but when there's a sickness and a spirit is attached to it remember we talk about uh jesus said satan called he called the spirit of infirmity satan all right and you got the spirit of uh, infirmity a dumb spirit a mute spirit these are demons. This is not just things that happen naturally in the world because of a fallen world, but because there's a spirit attached to it. And whenever you find a spirit attached to something in the bloodline, it seeks to claim victims. Are oh, you hearing me? Thank you, uh, Miss Bunny, for letting me know about the law of entropy. Now, I want you to write this down. I want you to write this, and, and don't forget these, okay? Whenever you notice something specific to your lineage, a specific character trait that happens to more than one person in your family line, that is an indication of a bloodline issue. Let's say it again. When you notice something specific to your lineage, a specific character trait, that happens to more than one person in your family line, that is an indication of a bloodline issue. All right? That may be a particular weakness 
That may be a particular sickness, a particular pattern that becomes a recurring pattern. It is there to bring failure into your life, into your family, and that needs your urgent attention. You cannot play with that. You must not play with that. You cannot procrastinate. You've got to deal with it today. I told you before, growing up, I just thought it was normal because my recollection of my granddaddy, okay, his name was Louis, when we went to visit him, he would always be, you know, inhaling. Uh, <clears throat> and sometimes he would joke me, you want some, you want some? Okay. But my granddad had asthma. My godfather, his name was Roger, he died in Paris of an asthma attack. My dad's brothers, 90% of them had asthma. Are you listening? On the other side, my granny, Louis was married to Sarah, she had Parkinson's disease. My recollection of my granny, we call her grand-mère, Okay, we call her Grand Mère. And Grand Mère was, uh, uh, I've never seen her walk. All, all my recollection was of her was uh, lay, laying in the bed and she couldn't even speak properly. Her voice was very faint because of the ravages of Parkinson's disease. Are you listening? So, I would see my aunts, I would see my uncles, they all had asthma, had to deal with asthma. The only one that I know that had to deal with Parkinson was my dad. So when I began to notice that, now before I got saved, I just thought I was normal. But the more I became, when I got saved at the age of 14, and then one by one I started seeing my uncles and hearing, hearing about my aunts dying of asthma, I thought, man, that's an issue. And when I got born again, and when my eyes were open to this every day, in fact, the day before this morning, I, you know, in, in my morning shower, the, as soon as the water hit my head and it hit me, my body, I began to confess the word of the living God. See, that's one of the ways you empower it and break it is by the confessing of God's word. You have no right over my bloodline. Asthma, you have no right over my, blood, my bloodline. You demon of asthma and Parkinson, you will not touch me in the name of Jesus. By the superior blood of Christ, I change now my bloodstream with the blood of Christ. Can you say amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. So you've got to look at it and address it. If in your family there's a particular iniquity, remember, that, remember what I told you, iniquity gives Satan iniquity in your life. If there is a particular sickness, a particular perversion, you've got to deal with it. All right? Second thing I want you to write down is this. Evil bloodline issues generate frustration, vexation, failures, illnesses, delays, and breakdowns. Did you hear that? You want, you want to write this down. Evil bloodline issues just like the woman with the issue of blood. Evil bloodline issues will generate frustration, vexation, failures, illnesses, delays, delays in marriage, delays in career, delays in pregnancy, and breakdowns. The goal of Satan in the bloodline issue is to render you a victim, and give you a sense of helplessness and hopelessness. The woman with the issue of blood, which tradition tells us that her name was Veronica, she spent all that she had on, on physicians and was nothing better but rather grew worse. She couldn't get better. So, she was going from one hopelessness to the next hopelessness. Are you listening to me now? Now, so you need to understand this. 
evil bloodline issues would generate frustration, vexation, failures, illnesses, delays, and breakdowns. And the, the goal of bloodline issues that Satan has in mind is to render you a victim and to give you a sense of helplessness and hopelessness. That is a lie from the devil. Now, write this down, please. <clears throat> Unless you close the doors to these bloodline issues and reverse it, they will persist. And if they persist, you will not be able to see the glory of God in your life. I didn't say that you're not born again. I didn't say that, you, that you're not on your way to heaven. But if you don't deal with it, your life on the earth will be miserable. So... Number three, unless you deal with it and close the doors on these bloodline issues, reversing the bloodline by applying the blood of Christ in your life, these things will persist, causing you not to see or not to taste the glory of God in your life. The fourth thing I want you to write down. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. The fourth thing I want you to write down is this. These evil bloodline issues, which manifest as recurring family patterns, are designed to keep you in the prison of frustration and fear. Let's say it again. These evil bloodline issues, which manifest as evil family recurring patterns, they are designed to keep you in the prison of frustration and fear. You are not designed to stay in a, first, in a prison of frustration and fear. This is why you've got to break out of it. All right? Now, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. That was number four. Number five, what I want you to do is write this down. Write this down. Dealing with bloodline issues, especially evil bloodline issues, will be your longest, your hardest, and your most difficult battle in life. For it is the battle of blood. It is the battle of blood. That was number five. Number six. Write this down. Number six. How can you identify bloodline issues? What are the factors that inform you that you're dealing with some bloodline issues? Write this down. Specific family weaknesses and characters. Then, specific recurring family diseases then specific family iniquity then specific family perversions all right it's the same recurring negative events are you listening? And the reason why it's difficult for, for you to deal with that because they believe that they have a right, a legal entry into your life. And they've been there from generation to generation. You've got to break their legalities. You've got to break their legal ground. And the only thing that breaks their legal ground is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? It is the blood. I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down, please. Let me give you four things. Let me give you four things today as I come to a close. I got to go preach. That's why I have to finish early. Let me give you four things today that will deal with the bloodline issues. Now, let me give you two examples of people. Abraham had some bloodline issue. David had some bloodline issue. The woman with the issue of blood had some bloodline issue. The man who was born crippled sitting at the gate called Beautiful. 
but yet his life was not beautiful, was a man who had some bloodline issue. Are you listening? He was born crippled from his mother's womb. He didn't do anything to be crippled. But yet he never knew what it meant to take a step forward in life. If you don't know how to take a step forward in life, no matter what you do, that's a bloodline issue. Are you listening? Praise God. Now, I want you to write this down. Four things. Four things that you need in order to to deal with bloodline issues. In fact, I'm going to give you five things. Okay? Number one. Number one. Number one is the blood of Christ, the cross of Christ. The cross of Calvary is what breaks the demands and the claims of your genetics. You've got to make sure that the blood is not just shed, but the blood is applied. The blood of the Lamb, all right? In the book of Exodus chapter 12, it was shed, but then it was also applied. So Jesus shed his blood for us. And it is right now on the heavenly altar, all right? But you've got to apply that blood. You've got to sprinkle that blood. It's called the, br the blood of sprinkle. How do you do it? You've got to confess the blood. That's why every day I speak the blood of Jesus. I was talking to my daughter this morning, and I, before she left, I said to her, let's say together, I speak the protective power of the blood of Jesus over my life. The blood protects me from all evil. So, the blood, say with me, the blood breaks the demands and the claims on my genetics. So if there is cancer on your father's side, if there is diabetes on your mother's side, you get up every day. When you do it, I don't know where you're going to do it, but you do it. So I do it every day. I do it every day in the shower. I break the claims on my genes and my genetics. There's no uh, asthma. You have no right over my life. Parkinson's disease. You have no right over my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Your blood breaks the legal ground that, even, that came in through iniquity, that came in through witchcraft, that came in through, I don't know what they did, okay, that came through um, evil alliances. Father God, whatever legal door that they believe they can, they, they, they come in and believe they have a right on my life, it is now revoked, rejected by the blood of Jesus. Can you say amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads and thank God for the blood. I have faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, number one, you must understand and enforce the power of the blood. They overcame him, the accuser, the persecuting attorney, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Number two, you've got to understand your position in Christ. You've got to understand your position in Christ. This is why you've got to read the Pauline epistles. I read and I pray the Pauline epistles. I pray Ephesians 1 and I pray Colossians 1. All right? Amen. I pray what I see in the scriptures. Glory to God. I declare, glory to God, my position in Christ. So understanding your position is the way you change your condition. You don't live from your condition. You live from your position. My position is, is unchangeable. But my condition is changeable. My condition is my flesh. But I change my condition by knowing my position in Christ. And my position in Christ is a reality because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. Can you say amen? So you must understand your position. You go to a church that teaches you about your position in Christ. Number three. Well, let me give you a position of yours in Christ. You are seated together with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities and above all powers. So you confess that. I confess that. I've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness, right, into the kingdom of the son of his love. I translate, I, I confess that. I'm no longer in darkness. Darkness has no authority over my life in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Praise God. Number three. You've got to enforce new creation realities. 
all right, by fervent prayers established upon the Word of God, applying the deliverance by the blood of Jesus Christ. So you've got to enforce new creation realities. My position reveals to me my identity. New creation realities let me know who I am. I've got to enforce it. I don't live by the flesh. Paul says, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Because if you look at the flesh, you got a lot of problem. So I enforce the new creation realities. Glory to God. Can you say amen? I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm on top and not beneath. I've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the son of his love. Glory to God. I am in Christ. I am crucified with Christ. And nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Can you say amen? So you enforce the new creation realities by fervent prayers established on the word of God, applying the deliverance by the blood of Jesus Christ. And number four, you make your confessions. You make your confessions. These four things, ladies and gentlemen, these four things will change your life. Confession, determined possession. And then number five, you renew your mind to the Word of God. You renew your mind to the Word of God. So write this down, please. Write this down. The blood of Christ, number one, the cross of Christ. Number two, understanding your position. Number three, enforcing new crea creation realities by fervent prayers. By what? Fervent, aggressive prayers established upon the word of God. Number four, you got to confess that word. I am, I am what the word says I am. I am not what my body tells me I am. When I was in the hospital last year in a coma, and before I went to the coma, I kept saying I will live and not die and declare the wonderful works of God. You can say whatever you want to say, devil. When the doctors gave up on me, I didn't give up on myself. I didn't give up on myself. I just kept believing the Word of God, kept believing the Word of God, kept hearing the Word of God, and then praying the Word of God, praying the Word of God. You got to get, you see, you got to go. Every og in my life, you've got to go. Can you say amen? You confess that glory to God. You pray it, and you renew your mind. You see yourself the way God sees you. I wish I had more time to give you today, but I don't. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Faith Lift Radio podcast. For more information about Dr. Glenn and how to offer your financial support, log on to glennarecchion.org.